when I found out Cardi was pregnant, my initial thoughts were that this is a terrible time to have a baby. And that that timing is made worse by the fact that her partner is trash. But I don't know Cardi. And those feelings had nothing to do with Cardi B, the person. They were reflections of the culture we live in that offers women who have children no support. To some extent, that's true no matter when you choose to have a kid or how much money you have. So I had to take a step back and stop with the judgment and disappointment and focus on the systems that make it so that women who have kids feel like they have to choose between fulfilling their professional ambitions and raising kids. Because again, this is not a Cardi issue. The New York Times just reported on research that showed that women who have kids between the ages of 25 and 35 never close the gender pay gap between them and their husbands. And yeah, that's heteronormative work, but it's still really interesting. So if you have kids younger or older than that, you are much more likely to be able to catch up. Now the reason for that is because those 10 years are the prime work years. That's when you're really building up your career. And the article doesn't offer any easy fixes, but we know that women are often the default primary caregivers. So if you and your partner are both working, then women are the ones who are expected to care for sick children, to pick them up from school, to go to the soccer practices. That's time away from your work that you can never get back if you really have deep professional ambitions. We've got to change social attitudes and policy to make sure that the burden of caregiving does not always fall on women's shoulders. Ultimately, Cardi should be able to have as many babies as she wants whenever she wants and attempting to deny her that is just it's unacceptable. And black women have been working around that issue for a long time. In 1994, a group of reproductive rights activists convened to develop a new paradigm for how we talk about whether or not women can have babies or not have babies and how they can do it. It's called reproductive justice. Here's how it's defined. One, the right not to have a child. Two, the right to have a child. And three, the right to parent children in safe and healthy environments. The foundation of reproductive justice work says that women are grown and we get to make our own decisions. And though our concerns for women who are pregnant may come from a place of genuine care and protectiveness, that protectiveness can easily devolve into paternalism and that's suffocating. In a recent interview with Hot 97, Cardi was clear that she was hurt by the way that we've been talking about her unborn baby. I hate the, the certain things that people say like, oh, like, I see so many women talking about I feel bad for her, why she's doing that in the height of her mm -hmm. career. And it's just like, why can't I have both? Right. Like, why can't I have both? Like, why do I have to choose a baby or a career, like a family or your career? Like, why can't I have both? Why do I have to be, like, in my mid-30s to have a baby? Like, uh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm a grown woman, right? I'm not 16, 17, 20 years old. I'm 25 years old. And I'm going to say this in the most humblest way. I'm a millionaire. I'm established. Cardi said it all. She's going to be fine. She has more financial resources than most of us will ever see. And seeing that made me reflect on how we needlessly project our fears onto other women of color. Now, if I got pregnant today, it's a problem, but I'm not her. Unplanned pregnancy can constrain the upward mobility of women who don't have financial resources or social support, but that's not the Cardi B story. And another thing about Cardi's pregnancy is that sometimes we're so focused on this idealized version of the right way to do things that we ignore the possibilities that doing things the wrong way presents. A female rapper getting pregnant at this point in her career could actually be groundbreaking in a great way. We all listen to the miseducation of Lauren Hill, where Lauren talked about people trying to dissuade her from having her baby Zion. Oh, this crazy circumstance. I knew his life deserved a chance, but everybody told me to be smart. Look at your career, they said. Lauren, baby, use your head. But instead I chose to use my heart It's 20 years later, time to evolve And Cardi being this famous and this pregnant Means that we are seeing a woman in her third trimester of pregnancy On huge stages, talking about sex and twerking And we've literally never seen that before So much of what women's sexuality is deemed acceptable Is determined by what men think is hot Sexual expression from women who are not supposed to be sexy Upsets some of that power balance 
We know how babies are made, but pregnant women aren't supposed to talk about sex because they're not fuckable. Whether she knows it or not, Cardi is resisting gender roles within hip hop, which is already about resisting mainstream social mores. It's super interesting. Black mothers should be celebrated no matter how they choose to present themselves. And look, it's, it's complicated, right? Because we are still consuming her sexuality. That's her MO. But we have to do it in a way that's different and sometimes uncomfortable because her pregnant body forces us to. And I'm actually really okay with sitting with that discomfort because I am pro more and different depictions of black motherhood. In Killing the Black Body, Dorothy Roberts explains why black women might feel compelled to push back against racist, sexist depictions of their motherhood by taking on more reserved presentations. Americans have expected black mothers to look like Aunt Jemima, dressed in an apron and head rag and working in a white family's kitchen. American culture reveres no black Madonna. It upholds no popular image of a black mother tenderly nurturing her child. When Beyonce was pregnant, she gave us lots of religious imagery that highlighted her divinity as an expectant mother. Serena Williams gave us classic nudes, but there are other options. Cardi gave us another option, and I'd say they're all valid and equally compelling because we are navigating uncharted territory. Now, I told y'all it's complicated, so I do worry that this sort of vulgar, carefree, uncensored performance might be compulsory for Cardi. Like, she couldn't stop even if she wanted to because she's so focused on getting to the bag. But again, I try not to project that too much onto her because I don't know her life. So I'm trying to interpret what she's giving us. Whatever the case, how we talk about Cardi and her pregnancy matters. Not just because it makes her sad, but because if we are saying this about this super rich, famous 25 year old woman, we're probably saying the same or worse to the other young black mothers in our lives. And that's a problem. I don't wanna be a part of robbing women of the joy of bringing life into the world or raising her children. That's just not the feminine that I want to advocate. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to help us continue doing this work at For Harriet, become a donor on our Patreon or make a one-time donation and join us for events across the country. I'll see you at Black Girls Gather all summer. Information for all of this stuff, including the resources that I just finished talking about, are linked below.